All right, knowing your rights with evictions. So learn more about your local rules. If you are at risk of an eviction, you have the right to contact the sheriff's office in your county to see if there is a local court order or local rules that protect you from being evicted during cold weather. Um, in Cook County, the sheriff does not evict anyone and when it is 15 degrees or below or during severe weather conditions. If you are at risk of an eviction, you have the right to one, get a written notice. A written eviction notice is also called a notice to terminate tenancy. You have the right to fix violations if you're not in compliance with the lease. You have the right to be represented by an attorney at court proceedings. You have the right to stay in your unit until an eviction order is carried out. Only local sheriffs can carry out an eviction order. Um, a notice to terminate is not an eviction order. You have the right to seek rental assistance if you have suffered financial hardships due to COVID. Let's talk about eviction notices. Your eviction notice must include the date of notice, the address and unit number, the date the lease will end, the amount owed or lease violations. For non-payment of rent, a five-day notice is given to a person with a lease. If you do not have a lease for non-payment of rent, it will be a 30-day notice. For lease violations, it will be a 10-day notice. Once again, so if you have a lease and you haven't paid rent, you will give, you'll be given a five-day notice. If you do not have a lease and you haven't paid rent, you'll be given a 30-day notice. And for any lease violations, you'll be given a 10-day notice. A notice to terminate is not an eviction order. This is the only, this is only the first step in the eviction process. Getting this notice does not mean you have to leave your apartment or your home. Please do not self-evict. If you get an eviction notice, you want to get legal help by contacting Eviction Help Illinois and then applying for rental assistance. So now we're go we'll go over the process of um, an eviction, a typical process. So first you'll receive um, your termination notice. Then if you do not leave, um, once again, don't self-evict. Self so when you don't leave, the landlord will file a complaint in court and then a summons will be issued to you to let you know when to appear for court. You guys will go to court. And then from there, the judge or jury will decide whether or not to enforce the eviction order. Please remember, only the local sheriffs can, ev can enforce an eviction order and remove tenants from a property. Local police cannot evict and landlords cannot lock out tenants. Okay. Let's go over the termination notice. So landlords must give a written notice of five, 10, 30 days, 60 days, or 120 days to end tenancy. Tenants have the chance to correct the problem um, before the time ends. Please do not self evict once again. With the eviction complaint, if a tenant does not correct the problem, the landlord can file an eviction case in court. The service is summons. A summons is a legal order to appear in court. A sheriff must deliver the summons to the tenant. For the court proceedings on the day, um, on the summons, so you'll go to court. On the summons, we'll have a court date. So on that day, the judge or jury will hear the, the landlord's evidence justifying the eviction and the tenant's defense. Um, the eviction order is the final step. So if the judge or jury decides the tenant should be evicted, the eviction order will be issued. The eviction process, once again. Here's a tip. So you may ask a judge to continue, also known as postponing your eviction case, if you submitted a rental assistance application and it is pending. You want to bring proof to court. Maybe it's an email confirmation. Maybe it's a letter in the mail that you received to say, hey, I have submitted an application and it's currently being under review or it's currently or it's pending. Um, you can ask for more time also to apply for rental assistance, but keep in mind the judge is not required to continue your case. Knowing your rights, lockouts are illegal. So if your landlord tries to illegally evict you, that is called a lockout. If your landlord does any of the followings, these are examples of a lockout. Changes or disable the locks, remove doors, windows, appliances, or fixtures, shut off or interferes with utility services, including heat, electricity, gas, hot or cold water, plumbing, and phone services, 
removes the tenant's personal property, uses or threatens violence against the tenant or their property, or act in a way that's making the property inaccessible. So what should you do if you get locked out? You should document it. You wanna take pictures um, to show that you've been locked out. You also wanna contact an organization that can help to be a mediator between you and your landlord. The Chicago Tenants uh, Movement serves all of Chicago residents. You can contact them at the number listed below. MTO is helping folks who are outside of the Chicago land area. So if you're in a different um, county, in Illinois, you can contact MTO to see if they can help you um, as far as finding a mediator to help you and your um, landlord communicate better. And if you need more help, Illinois Legal Aid Online is here to help you. Go to get help on IllinoisLegalAid.org and apply for free legal help from one of our legal aid partners. And we have information about housing, evictions, family law, public benefits, debt and collections, immigration, criminal records, and much more. Help us improve. Text B, Brittany U, sorry. <laughs> Text Brittany U to the number listed on the screen to fill out a short survey about the presentation today. Thank you all for being here and listening to this presentation. Have a good day.